that people have done that in a peaceful yeah. manner. Because uh, again, public safety is our number one goal. One of the other things that we need to remember, Phil, is this is a piece of property that should be open to everybody. Farmers market, people walking their dogs, uh, you know, people that want to sleep on the grass and all that other stuff during the day. And it's just a regular public park. And it seems like, from what I've heard, some people that are used to use this park and have a right to use this park as much as any of us haven't been able to because the Occupy camp is here. That's so the other I said with those zones that's very specific. Now, I know there's a way we can run this day and night according to what works for you guys and the laws. First, like, you know, nighttime laws and park time day where we can add this clearing and love it. So we have a secure agreement like you guys in the city. I have no problem making these people go on the tents. They have a lot of protest donations for that. We should have to say only have services. So it attracts more than people who do say to come to city hall to see what they're doing. And at night, it should be, what you're talking about, it should be a peaceful organization. But let's be honest here. This, this, the real reason that this is unsustainable is because politically it's unsustainable for the city, who has not dealt with the the uh, issues of homelessness and bank corruption and government corruption, and that the forces who own our governments, all the way down to the city level, are the ones that are putting pressure on the city to become the handmaidens of the point zero zero one percent. Let's be honest. That's really why this is unsustainable. Okay, that, one more. I want one more point because I know this, commander. I've heard you are a straight shooter. So I will take your lack of denial in terms of the, of a uh, paramilitary a, par, a paramilitary operation. Excuse me, a paramilitary operation being planned against a group of uh, peaceful people to stand on its own. What I would like to know is what is the involvement of the so-called homeland security apparatus that was set up after the September 11th false flag operation and how, because we know that from the, the calls that have been reported of 18 mayors being facilitated by homeland security and FBI, that their intention was to teach them how to show force in the middle of the night, overwhelming force in front of very little press, if any, and to basically disperse people in an unlawful and I would call it terrorist manner. Is that what's going on here and, and what is the LAPD's conjunction with the Homeland Security apparatus? Well, I haven't met with any Homeland Security folks here and I don't know of any Homeland Security folks that are involved in anything that we're doing right here. As you can see from the media that's surrounding me and the six or eight uh, uh, media vans that are parked right across the street that have been there round the clock for the past eight days, six, six days. Um, this is really an open book here in Los Angeles. It's a really transparent, I think, uh, what the police department is doing here. And as I mentioned at the very beginning of our conversation, you know, we're planning on having 15 guys from the media, 15 independent members of the media come into here, uh, you know, whenever we come in here, and they're welcome to come in here, not only now, but even when we, uh, even if and when we do have to come in here and make arrests. Commander Amir, how did you explain that two months ago, all these people yeah, who are three, 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 occupying three. this place were not criminals, and now they, they, they are? Yeah, um, well.